news, the FDA has officially granted full approval status for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine is now approved for everyone ages 16 and older. There are at least three in 10 American adults who still have not received the COVID-19 vaccine, even though they're eligible. And according to the CDC, 99% of COVID-19 deaths are from unvaccinated people. A lot of people were vaccine hesitant because the vaccines were not previously approved by the FDA. So if you were one of those people People. Now the Pfizer vaccine is approved by the FDA. You should go run and get vaccinated. Let's all take action to keep each other safe and healthy. Let's talk about this pandemic we're living in, the importance of vaccines, cultural vaccine passports, and more. As always, I will leave some links in the description box below. So my friends and I recently started a book club, which is really fun. I personally have never been a part of a book club. I thought it would be fun to have a little community, a little group where you get to actively discuss the same books and have differing opinions and thoughts. It just makes reading a book that much more fun and interactive when you do it with a group of people. So I started a book club with two of my friends and then we actually just added one other person. So there's four of us now and we just meet on Zoom the first day of every new month. We had our first meeting. It was so much fun. I actually thought it would be kind of fun to come on here and do a book review. I've never done a book review on this channel, but I thought it would be really fun if you guys are looking for some new reading recs. So our August book club pick was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. This is a Reese's book club pick and I follow her book club on Instagram and they always have really interesting female led narratives, which I really like. The Last Thing He Told Me has 3.9 stars on Goodreads and it's about 300 pages. So this was a mystery, a thriller, if you will. The little synopsis is that it centers around a woman named Hannah who marries a man named Owen and becomes part of his family, which includes his daughter, Bailey who's an angsty teenager, and she is not so thrilled about her new stepmom. But when Owen mysteriously goes missing, Hannah and Bailey join together, join forces to try to figure out what happened. So this is a really fun, I would describe it as like a good poolside read. It's the perfect August summer book because it's a pretty easy read. It's definitely a page turner because you are just wanting to know what happens. Chapters leave off on cliffhangers like just a really good thriller TV show would. The way that she actually organizes the book is really interesting because the chapters flip back and forth from the past to the present. I think that was a really interesting way of formatting it. Throughout the book, you start to kind of think you know where things are going. And then personally, I was totally surprised by the different plot twists that came up. And the ending was very surprising as well and very satisfying, I would say. Overall, the critiques that came up in our book club this month were that the characters weren't developed enough so that you cared about them emotionally. We all agreed that we cared the most about the stepdaughter, Bailey, because her character was really well-rounded and relatable. Whereas the main character, Hannah, she seemed a little too perfect. She didn't have enough layers to her personality to really get the reader to care about her, if that makes sense. The setting of the book is really interesting because they live in San Francisco on a houseboat and and that just adds some really cool imagery to the entire book. In summary, my thoughts about this book are that it wasn't super memorable. I don't think that this is something that I'm gonna remember in, in detail a few years from now because it didn't really hit me emotionally. However, I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this book. It 
was like watching a fun mystery thriller TV show where you can kind of just zone out and escape. It's definitely that kind of novel, the perfect thing to read poolside whenever you just want kind of a uh, fun escape novel. I'm a huge fan of mystery and like thriller books, so this is definitely a genre that I love and I think if you feel the same way then you will probably enjoy this book. Definitely recommend if you're looking for a fun end of summer read. Also, I think joining a book club or creating one is such a great thing. I highly, highly recommend it. There are tons of public book clubs that you can find online and join the Zooms every month, or you can start your own with even one friend. It would be really fun. You guys can connect, talk about the book, and it's great because it holds you accountable. So there's kind of that peer pressure to make sure that you read not only read the book but also have something to say about it have some thoughts annotate it take some notes it's really fun to be able to reflect on a book that you've read rather than just read it put it down and not really talk or think about it in a bigger way so that is my little book review happy reading everyone so I've added a new piece to my morning routine and I thought I would share it with you guys because it's been something that I've really been enjoying and I got this idea from Jen M's channel. She answers these seven questions every morning and so I wrote them down in my journal. So what I've been doing is I'll get up, have my breakfast, and then come outside and answer the questions. It's really given me a chance to reflect on how I'm feeling and just sort of take inventory of where I'm at at the moment and who I want to be today, what I want to do today, and just sort of what my intentions are. And even just taking this short amount of time, it takes me maybe like 20 minutes to answer these questions. It gives me just such a sense of clarity after I'm done. Yeah, when I do this practice, I really notice the self-awareness that it brings to my whole day. And when I don't, I, I really miss doing it. So it's something that I've been enjoying recently. Here are the seven questions. The first one is my daily affirmation. The second one is today I wanna focus on. Three, I'm grateful for. Four, three traits I love about me. Five, the person I'm becoming is slash can. Six, I have an opportunity to be my future self today when. And seven, I am proud that slash of. And the cool thing is you can tweak these questions however you need to. You know, they're not set in stone and whatever works for you is how you should set these up. In the beginning, I was sort of confused about how to answer my daily affirmation, the first question, because I just sort of didn't know where to start. I was like, what is my daily affirmation? I don't know. I just sort of went with it and I tried not to judge myself. So whether that's kind of, you know, something that you want to remember, like you want to remember that you are strong, you are creative, and you are a force of love in the world. It could even be just a quote that you really love, a line from a poem. It can be anything. That's my little tip for that first question because that one I know kind of threw me for a loop the first time that I was trying to answer it, and it's gotten easier the more and more I've done it. What I really love about the future self aspect of these questions is that it gives you a chance to think about who you want to be in the future, but not only just focusing on the future, it has you reflect on how you can become that person today and steps that you can take to become the person that you want to be right now. I also think just reflecting on things that you're grateful for, I mean, people talk about this all the time, but it is so mind shifting when you actually write down some things even no matter how mundane you think they are that you're grateful for just really shifts your perspective so yeah those are the journal prompts that i have been using recently and loving wanted to share them with you guys and 
Thank you, Jen M, for the inspo. I also wanted to quickly recommend a book that changed my life recently. And I know that's really dramatic, but it's true. And it's this book called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. And it's a reflection on sort of this self-help course, spiritual course called A Course in Miracles. And this is her reflections on that course, um, which that's next on my list to read. This book had me really reflecting on where I'm at spiritually and how I can sort of strengthen my faith. And it's just been, it's been a really beautiful, thought-provoking read. And I've been recommending it to literally everyone that I have seen. So yeah, this is the summer of self-reflection, self-awareness. So important to keep your body strong, but it is so freaking important to keep your mind strong as well. And that's something that I've really been learning recently. And I'm just really fascinated by why I do the things that I do and the person that I have been and the person that I want to be and just a lot of uh, a lot of reflecting and learning new things about myself. I just started therapy. So yeah, you know, all that jazz. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.